Good morning, everybody. Um, right now, we're going to go over our CFA from last week, CFA number eight. So before we do that, though, um, I am going to put your scores up on the board. And um, I'll probably actually post them as well on here. So you can find them by scrolling down to the data and goal setting. So scroll down, and then you're going to find the student data and goal setting um, Google Sheets. Open this up. And when you do that, you should already have your scores in here from, I think, number CFA number six, definitely number seven, and now we're going to put in our score for number eight. Okay? All right, so I'll go ahead and put up the uh, scores on the board for you. Those should be up there. And so after you get your score, go back to, whoops. After you get your score, go back to uh, this version and go ahead and put your score down. All right, now just want you to re reflect on that. Did you um, do better than on CFA number seven? Uh, did you stay the same? Did you do worse? So think about um, how you felt while you were taking the CFA last week, last Friday. Did you feel like you knew the material better? Uh, why was that? Why did you know it better? Um, so these are just some questions to think about, some ways for you to understand how you learn and uh, what helps you. All right, so let's go over the test. So again, this was uh, CFA number eight, steps toward independence. Okay, so this first question, um, you can read it all. I'm not going to read it again, but um, after you read it, it should become clear that um, you also need to make sure you read the bottom section here that says law of April 6, 1830. Okay. Um, so this is actually a question that we had on our last CFA. Uh, it's the exact same question. So hopefully you got this one right. Okay. So what was the result of the decree in the excerpt below? Remember the word excerpt, you're going to see that forever. That just means uh, this paragraph of quoted uh, text from, from somewhere. All right, so this is about the law of April 6th, and the main thing that you need to know about the law of April 6th was that um, it halted or stopped or canceled American immigration to Mexico. And of course, Texas um, in the year 1830 was still part of Mexico. Okay, um, so that is what happened. All right, number two, similarly to the U.S. Constitution, the Republic of Texas Constitution includes what? Okay, so this is actually up on our double bubble chart, the uh, the one with the Texas Constitution and the one with the U.S. Constitution. And right down the center, it shows the similarities. One of the main ones that you need to know is that there is a Bill of Rights in both of them. All right, number three, what was the goal of delegates meeting for a convention? By the way, meeting is spelled incorrectly here. Um, don't know what happened there. Uh, but what was the goal of delegates meeting for a convention at Washington on the Brazos on March 1st, 1836? Okay. So we did our Google Meets assignment over this. And you should have known that the main thing that they were doing there was declaring independence for Mexico. Okay. Um, after they declared their independence for Mexico, then they began to write a constitution and they also created a temporary or ad interim government. Okay. But the main thing that happened was that they declared their independence for Mexico. All right. Number four, why is the conflict at Gonzales? known as the Lexington of Texas. All right, so in this case, this is talking about the Battle of Gonzales or the Battle at Gonzales. So anytime you see the word conflict, it just means um, a fight or a 
disagreement or um, a battle in this case. Now, without even knowing what the Lexington of Texas or what Lexington is, you should have been able to figure out, oh, okay, um, well, I, I know we talked about Gonzalez, and I, you know, and you start loading all those things into your brain that we talked about. We talked about a cannon. We talked about a the flag. Okay, so it says here the conflict was peacefully resolved and ended in a truce. Okay, well, I don't remember there being anything peaceful about it because the people of Gonzalez fired the cannon at the Mexican soldiers. Uh, many colonists gave up the cry for freedom. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, I'm not sure what that means, but I don't quite remember that. All right, the Mexicans were providing arms and ammunition to the colonists. Okay, so the Mexicans were providing them, they were giving them arms and ammunition. Well, that's, that's not true. Uh, remember they had the flag that said, come and take it? Well, um, the Mexicans attempted to take arms and, and ammunition from the colonists. Okay, that one seems more correct, right? The Mexican soldiers were trying to take arms, in this case a cannon, uh, from the, the colonists who lived in the town of Gonzales. Okay, so J is the correct answer. All right, so which of the following is true of the Convention of 1836? All right, this one, honestly, we didn't explicitly talk about together. Um, this is more or less one that... Um, if you read in the textbook um, the section that you were supposed to as you were making your uh, Google Meet convention, then you, you should have learned about this. But, all right, so it did not provide for equal rights for Native Americans and enslaved people. It took delegates at the convention a long time to make decisions. Remember, the, the convention happened from uh, March 1st, 1836, to March 17th. So that's only, that's only two weeks. I mean, you know, it's a relatively long time, but not as long as it could have been. So I don't think it was that long. It allowed ministers and priests to hold office. Um, we didn't really talk, in, we didn't talk about Christian um, or religious-ness uh, during this week, uh, especially relating to the Convention of 1836, because it was all about politics in this case. Um, its Declaration of Independence began with complaints against the British king. Um, well, that doesn't make sense because Texas is not under British rule. Texas is under Spanish or Mexican uh, rule. So that one's not correct at all. Okay. Uh, again, C is right out because we haven't talked about that. And so it leaves A or B. Now, in this case, we know that, of course, people who were slaves or enslaved uh, as the word says, were not treated um, equally or correct uh, in today's terms. At that time, unfortunately, it was how they were treated. And so their constitution did not um, uh, treat them correctly. Now, if you also go back to um, if you also go back to the double bubble chart over on the wall or on our Google classroom, right? Texas Constitution, U.S. Constitution on either side. Down the middle, it talks about how slavery is protected by both constitutions um, originally. Now, in the U.S. Constitution, and, I, and of course the Texas one also, that was changed later on. All right, so that was the test. Um, so hopefully you did well. I was proud of you guys. Many of you um, made a 60 or above. Uh, and 40% of you actually made an 80, uh, 44% of you actually made an 80 or above, uh, which is a really good uh, number. So good job.